and welcome to OT Over Easy. My name is Becca and today we are talking about hands. Today we'll be doing a quick and dirty rundown of the bones of the hand as well as little tips on how to palpate them. If you have an anatomy textbook on hand or even just the internet, I would recommend pulling up a picture of the bones of the hand so that you can follow along with what I'm drawing to help you synthesize the information that I'm showing you in the video. My goal today is to help you understand where these bones actually are in the hand, because looking at a skeleton and understanding that is one thing, but knowing where they actually are on a human being who is alive and has flesh over their bones is a different challenge. So let's crack on. Okay, so here we have the bones of the hand and wrist. Um, I've got drawings here on the palmar or volar side, and then another set on the dorsal side so that you can get an idea of where they are <clears throat> on both sides of the hand. Please note that this is not exactly anatomically correct. Um, it's really difficult to accurately draw any bones, but especially these carpal bones, without using an x-ray machine on top of your musculature and have it be accurate. So hopefully this is close enough to get you to understand generally where these bones are, but again, this is why I would recommend having open an actual picture of a skeleton so that you can compare and see what it actually looks like accurately. In the anatomy world, we categorize the carpal bones, these eight small bones here, into two rows. We have the proximal row, which are these four from the red to the blue here, and the distal row, which are these four. And again, we have the two large forearm bones here, the radius and the ulna. If you mix up these two, a lot of people remember that radius is rad, so you give it a thumbs up because it's on the same side as the thumb. And flip it over on the other side, radius, thumb side. For these little carpal bones, I'm going to start over here with the pisiform. Some people call it pisiform, pisiform, I say pisiform, but however you say it, I'm starting with this one because I think it's the easiest to palpate on the hand. So if you feel down here on the proximal ulnar side of your palm, there's a really prominent bony landmark right there, and that is the pisiform. You can actually even move it around a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and mark that P for pisiform. So if you're looking at the hand from a palmer view, pisiform is actually sitting on top of this orange one here. This is triquetrium. So we're going to give that a little try for triquetrium. So if you find pisiform in palpation, you know that triquetrium is sitting right underneath it. And if you look at the hand from a dorsal view, you can't actually see PC form, or if you do, you might just see it peeking a little bit around the side. Um, but for the most part, you're going to see triquetrium, but not necessarily PC form, because again, PC form on the palmer side is sitting on top of triquetrium. Next up, if you go back to that PC form for palpation, and then you move just a little bit distally and a little bit radially, if you feel around in this part of your hand, you might feel a small bump in there, and that is going to be the hook of the hamate. Don't panic if you can't feel it, because it is a little tricky, but on many people it's also um, a little bit of a tender spot, so if you're really pressing in there and you feel a wee bit of tenderness, um, then you're probably in the right spot. So if we go back to our drawing here, there was PC form, we moved a little bit radial and a little bit distal. This right here is the hamate. And that's it on the dorsal side there. Now I'm going to skip over to the other side of the hand and we're going to find trapezium, which is this guy here. Now, don't be tempted to call this trapezius. Trapezius is a muscle around your neck and your shoulders. The bone in your hand is called trapezium. And we're going to find him by looking at the end of the first metacarpal, which is this bone right here. And we'll talk about the metacarpals more in a moment here. But for now, you're going to find the first metacarpal, which starts right here below your thumb knuckle here. And then you're just going to slide right down that bone until you feel a divot. And that is where trapezium is, articulating with the first metacarpal. So we're going to give this guy a little... TM 
for trapezium. And again, if you flip over at the base of the first metacarpal, there he is right there, trapezium. So now go back to palpating that trapezium. If you go, remember, down that thumb until you find that divot. So here's your trapezium. And then if you draw, keep drawing proximal just a wee bit, and then just go a little bit ulnarly too on the palmer side, you should feel another fairly prominent bony bump right there. And that bony bump is on your scaphoid. So again, you're over here, and if you go below your trapezium, see, this is where you can see my drawing's not exactly accurate because that bony bump is actually right here on me, but we're representing it here. This gets an S for the scaphoid, okay? And there it is on the dorsal side as well. There's trapezium, and then below it is your scaphoid. Now, in between your scaphoid and your triquetrium, this little guy here is the lunate, so he gets an L for lunate. Um, I don't have a cool palpation tip for this guy, but again, you know it's between the scaphoid and triquetrium, so if you're feeling, you feel that PC form, you know that triquetrium's underneath it, you find that bump of scaphoid, you know that it's somewhere in between those two landmarks, right about in here. So that's your lunate, and then again on the dorsal side, between the scaphoid and the triquetrium, lunate is hiding right in there. So now going back out to finish this distal carpal row, we had our trapezium. Next to that, we have trapezoid. He gets a little TD for trapezoid. Sorry, this is kind of hard to read, but hopefully you've been following along, okay? Um, so trapezium, we have trapezoid, and then the final bone in this row, this one here, this is the capitate. So he gets a C for capitate. And on the back here, we've got, again, trapezium, there's your trapezoid, and then this green one here, this is the capitate. Now to find this guy, I actually find it easier to find on the dorsal side of the hand rather than the palmer side. The capitate articulates with the third metacarpal right here, which comes down from your middle finger. So if you, from your middle finger down, palpating, 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 just like you did sliding down the thumb here. You're just gonna slide down that bone right here until you come to a little divot. For me, it's right there. That little divot, that is your capitate. And actually, you can do a similar thing for trapezoid as well with the second metacarpal. Just draw, draw down there until you feel a little divot and that is gonna be your trapezoid right there, okay? So that's how I knew where this was on here. I just drew down until I felt that divot. That's the capitate right there. Now the mnemonic that I was taught to remember these bones goes, if you're looking at the palm going from left to right, proximal to distal is, some lovers try positions that they can't handle, okay? Some lovers try positions that they can't handle. So again, the bones that cor correlate with that are scaphoid, lunate, triquetrium, pisiform, trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, and the hamate. If you're going to use the mnemonic for on the back of the hand, remember you just have to reverse the direction. Some lovers try, and remember that pisiform isn't necessarily going to be visible, but it's on top of this triquetrium, so some lovers try positions that they can't handle. Okay? So that's the tricky stuff done. Uh, real quick, the next kind of row of bones we have, I've got them in black here. These are the metacarpals, one, two, three, four, and five, um, and they are named just like that. The first metacarpal, second metacarpal, third, fourth, and fifth. Uh, the first metacarpal articulates with the trapezium. Remember how we palpated down that bone to find the trapezium? So that's there. The second metacarpal articulates mostly with the trapezoid. The third, mostly with capitate. And then the fourth and the fifth mostly articulate with the hamate. So that's your metacarpals. And then all of these remaining bones up here, these are the phalanges. Singular phalanx, plural phalanges. 
The thumb has two phalanges and the other fingers have three. So in the thumb, they're just called the proximal phalanx and the distal phalanx. In the fingers, they are called the proximal phalanx, the middle phalanx, and the distal phalanx. Now when figuring out where these bones are in the hand, you just have to look at where your joints are pretty much. So if I look at my index finger, or digit two, the second digit, the distal phalanx is just this little bone right up here, right from the tip to pretty much this crease right here, right? You can see that that, that is a bone right there. That's the distal phalanx. The middle phalanx is right here, going crease to crease on my finger, right? You can see there's a straight line, that's the middle phalanx. And then the proximal phalanx goes here from this knuckle down to this knuckle. For this one, you have to be careful, it goes from this crease, but it's not this crease here, right? If you try to block yourself there, you can't, you can't bend right there right? Because this is one solid bone. It actually comes, if you look, it comes right down to this palmer crease right here. You can see where I drew on this hand. It comes all the way down to this palmer crease, not this little crease here in your finger. So don't be fooled, okay? <laughs> and I'll just pause a moment here on the dorsal side of the hand to make sure that you can see that, but it's the same deal again. You've got the metacarpals articulating with the corresponding bones of the distal carpal row. Then you've got on the thumb, the proximal phalanx, distal phalanx, and then on the rest of the fingers you've got the proximal, middle, and distal phalanges. And those are the bones of the hand. Again, I want to reiterate that the drawings on my hand are not exactly anatomically correct, but hopefully they're a good enough visual to help you understand where these things are in the hand. Overall, body anatomy is not my strong suit, but I do love hands. So if this video was helpful, I'd be more than happy to make more videos on musculature, blood supply, nerves, and things like that of the upper extremity, if that's something that you would also find helpful. But for now, I hope that this video made studying a little more easy. Bye-bye!